The joy in their faces was indescribable. They know this is the home stretch stage towards getting full justice. Justice that has seemed elusive for so many years was not so far from being achieved. Watching the proceedings live from London at the Kenya Human Rights Commission headquarters in Lovington, the elderly men and women sat attentively awaiting the verdict with those who did not understand the English language having interpreters keep them in the know. And after the verdict, now it's up to them. If they want us to talk out of the court, we are very much prepared. And we talk, they go with our terms, then we agree. If they don't, we continue to full hearing. The British government had initially argued that all liabilities for the torture by colonial authorities were transferred to the Kenyan Republic upon independence in 1963 and that it could not be held liable now. However, the surviving victims and other claimants representing their already deceased kin kept pushing for justice. It was these efforts that led a British court last year to rule that the claimants did have arguable cases in law and a date for the hearing had been set, culminating to the events today. We are gathered here to celebrate a momentous victory in the Mau Mau case in the landmark ruling delivered today at the Royal Courts of Justice in London. Judge Makumb dismissed the UK government's attempt to stop the proceeding of the Mau Mau case on account of the 1980 statute of limitation law. This victory fortifies the Mau Mau case following an earlier ruling of July 23, 2011, where the court ruled against the UK government on the issue of the statute of succession where the UK government claimed that upon independence, the Kenyan government had assumed responsibility for the actions of the UK government. It had been expected that one of the outcomes of this landmark ruling was an out-of-court settlement or maybe setting up of a welfare scheme to take care of the elderly Kenyans. But with today's turnout of events, the whole world will be watching keenly to see how this turns out. Even though the British government had used the Limitation Act to argue that the cases had taken a long time and thus they had no obligation or responsibility to compensate the claimants, the victim's lawyer was adamant to the end that the Britons needed to pay up for the atrocities as some of the victims who suffered under colonial rule are still languishing in poverty as they were left with injuries that rendered them almost completely disabled. Now for them to continue relying on technicalities, being well aware that the majority of these victims are in the 80s, late 80s, that many of them live in squalid poverty, that many of them are not even able to afford health care in their old age. What could be more despicable? What could be more immoral than Her Majesty's government? To continue as it were, to buy time, simply to wait for all these veterans to die one by one before testing justice. Thousands of people were killed during the Mau Mau revolt against British rule in Kenya in the 1950s and 1960s, and out of a general concern, the case had started attracting the attention of prominent figures globally, including South African Nobel laureate Desmond Tutu.